changes in the activity of heat energy and electric charge can be uniform or non-uniform. In electrical systems, a uniform change is a constant voltage and current in a circuit. While a non-uniform change is the flow of charge into and out of a capacitor, like that in a strobe lamp. In thermal systems, uniform change is when a constant temperature difference moves heat from a warm area to a cold one at a steady rate. While a non-uniform change can be the flow of heat energy out of something that is cooling to room temperature. Time constants are used in cases where the flow of electric charge or heat energy are non-uniform. Time constants enable a technician to predict and calculate when these non-uniform changes will be complete. Let's begin with electrical systems. Electrical power generating systems are designed to produce a steady flow of electricity. Great care is taken to ensure that voltages are maintained within narrow limits. If the voltage is not maintained at a constant level, technology that relies on a constant flow of electricity will be affected, which can become expensive, not to mention frustrating to the operator. Uh, uh. When voltage is constant and the load is constant, the electrical system is in a steady state. If the current is 10 amps, then you can safely predict that every second, 10 coulombs of charge will flow past a point. In most systems, maintaining a constant voltage and current is vital to the health of the components. But sometimes a changing voltage is needed. Systems such as strobe lamps or pulsed lasers require very high voltages in short periods of time. The voltage is usually not available in full from the source, so it's built up and stored in a capacitor. Charging and discharging a capacitor involves voltages that change over a period of time. The rate of charging a capacitor is like the rate of filling the sealed air tanks. It was easier to fill the tanks at first because of the pressure difference between the pump and the tanks. But as the pressure inside the tanks increased, the flow rate slowed down. In charging a capacitor, the charge flows into the capacitor quickly at first because there's a large difference between the voltage of the source and the voltage in the capacitor. But as the charge builds on the plates, the voltage in the capacitor increases and approaches that of the source. The flow of charge into the capacitor slows down. If we plot that increase of voltage over time, we see an exponential curve rising from zero and approaching 99% capacity. Five time constants is how long it takes the capacitor to become charged. The time constant for a capacitor is important because the system using the capacitor may need the voltage quickly, such as in a strobe lamp, which fires in rapid succession. A time constant can also be used to calculate how long it will take for a capacitor to discharge. The charge flows out in a non-uniform rate. Like the pressure in the sealed tank that changed when the valve was open, the voltage in the capacitor is continually reducing as the capacitor discharges. The voltage is very high at the beginning of the discharge, then tapers off exponentially. The time constants for this curve indicates how long it will take for the capacitor to release its energy. A similar process happens in inductors. They also become charged and discharged in a non-uniform way. And time constants can be used to determine how long it will take for the charging and discharging of an inductor to take place. Now let's look at thermal systems. Heat is moved by temperature difference. When the temperature difference between the hot and cold areas is constant, the heat will flow at a constant rate, such as calories per second. This state of equilibrium is how a radiator works. The heat flowing into the system from the engine is the same as the heat flowing out through the air. In many manufacturing processes such as steel, glass, or even certain candies, the rate at which the material cools from a molten state to a solid is vital to the formation of the solid. An improper cooling rate can cause cracks, bubbles, or separation of alloys. As a material cools to room, or what's called ambient temperature, the temperature difference between the material and the ambient is constantly changing. That means that the heat flows out of the material 
faster in the beginning, then tapers off as the temperature of the material and the surrounding medium get closer together. Plotting a curve of the temperature change over a period of time shows an exponential decay. An exponential curve is also produced when heat flows into a system. At the beginning, the temperature difference between the heat source and the material is large. But as the temperature of the material approaches that of the source, the flow rate of heat slows down. In both cases, finding the time constants for these curves will determine how long it will take for most of the change to take place. Designers of electrical and thermal systems must determine the maximum values needed for their operations and make sure that the desired conditions are met before the exponential curve begins to flatten out. For example, if a material is cooling to ambient temperature and it never reaches that temperature, a coolant can be used to set the ambient lower than is actually desired. This, in effect, shifts the curve of the time constant so that the cooling rate is still fast when the desired temperature is reached. Electrical systems do the same thing when determining the maximum or minimum voltage needed. The values are set between the steepest slope of the curve, so the effective voltage is reached as quickly as possible. In this way, technicians are able to use time constants to predict and control non-uniform changes in electrical and thermal systems.